Can you give us a little perspective and a little background on what is it that you've got lined up here for us tonight? Yeah, uh, so last week we started with kind of some basics on the cryptography types of challenges. Um, I uh, had mentioned then that each of these uh, streams that we do, we're going to be covering different types of topics that we see inside of our event. Um, those types of categories include cri cryptography. Other ones are uh, exploitation, reverse engineering, um, some trivia, some forensics types of things. So this, uh, for this month, uh, we're covering some reverse engineering. Um, I have a challenge that we did not use for any of the regional events or finals last year, but it was a challenge that we used uh, in our local event in previous years. So um, this is something that uh, regardless if anybody had participated, it'll be available in the sandbox later. Uh, so you can uh, follow along here, just get an idea of what's going on and then attempt to solve it and uh, uh, you know, get the experience there from that. Um, so with that, uh, we can take a look at the challenge here. So as a quick recap, for anyone who's national, this is a never before seen challenge in the reverse engineering category. Do I got that right? Yep, yep. Okay, cool. So uh, since we don't have a scoreboard up and running, I just have the challenge information here for us. Uh, the challenge name is called Go Get It. Uh, and I have the challenge.txt file here, uh, which just has all the information that we would typically uh, display on the scoreboard itself. Uh, so this would include the title, go get it, uh, a description, which is essentially like your hint or your challenge clue, giving you a little bit of guidance as to what the point of this challenge is. Um, usually all the information that's provided uh, within the challenge description, the challenge name, is to give you a little bit of a clue as to what your focus should be uh, and how it should be handled. So. This one, again, let's go get it. Uh, this was created by a friend of mine, Anthony Rhodes. He uh, is a uh, great programmer. Uh, he's in the information security field, uh, and he created this, uh, like I said, for one of our local events. This is a little bit more of a medium challenge, and that's medium relative to our event, right? So this wouldn't be particularly difficult for somebody that's very skilled in reverse engineering, but in this instance, uh, for somebody that's really kind of getting into it, uh, it's gonna provide a couple extra little bumps in the road. So with that, uh, the challenge description, it says we've been working on a password checking program. If you know a password, you get a flag, or maybe there's another way. So there's two ways to really approach this. A is by doing some traditional reverse engineering to dig through exactly how the challenge operates, uh, figure out uh, where there might be a way to gain information. Um, and then the second part, this, or maybe there's another way, that's kind of the path that I'm going to focus on here. It's a little bit easier. Um, and it's a little bit more beginner friendly. So with that, we have uh, the challenge itself, which is a binary, it's just called challenge. Um, if we use uh, the file uh, uh, command on Linux and we provide it with the file that we are targeted with solving here, uh, we can get some information on what type of file this is. So we can see that this is an ELF 64-bit uh, executable. Um, so this is built on Linux, uh, it's, it's an executable file. Um, it's it's a Go application, right? So we have it as a, it's a Go application. So it was built using the Golang uh, language. And it, it wasn't stripped, which means that it doesn't have like uh, all of the information that was removed. So there's some stuff that's still kind of uh, latent and still kind of uh, available within the binary itself, um, which makes it a little bit easier. You know, if you strip out information, it makes the challenge a little bit more difficult. It, it kind of removes some of the metadata from the binary itself. So if we run the challenge itself, uh, it's kind of basic. It just says enter the password, right? And you put in, you know, what you think the password is, and it's going to tell you if you're right or wrong. Um, so the whole goal is, okay, well, what is the password? What can we figure out? How can we gain the password? Um, like I said, the the uh, traditional way would be to go through, uh, to decompile it, to go through uh, all of the instructions. If you're familiar with like assembly, um, you can you can go through that. Uh, what I typically like to do with uh, things like challenges like this is see what information you can get. We saw that it was uh, not stripped, so there's some, some information within there. So uh, a typical uh, way to grab information out of a binary is with the strings command. And what that'll do it is it'll it'll spit out any uh, information that is kind of machine readable or like uh, human readable inside of a binary. Um, and it can provide some information in there. So if we run the strings command, we can see there's a significant amount of uh, text data can 
uh, contained within this binary. Uh, a lot of this that comes out is, you know, it, it ends up being characters that are readable, but not necessarily English, right? It's just kind of information that was contained inside the binary. Um, but we did see a lot of other things that were readable as well. So um, since this is a Go binary, it is kind of all compiled together. Uh, you have everything that you need uh, to execute it uh, on the system. If I go to the uh, command here and I, and I try to run like the Go language, I don't have it installed here, right? But I can still run the challenge because it's all compiled within it, right? So uh, that's what we see when we run the strings command. Um, and... Uh, we're going to look at this a little bit more uh, in depth here. So uh, we can see that there's a lot of uh, a lot of information in here. Uh, if we go through, I'm not going to go through the more. Um, we can see that there's uh, a lot of calls to uh, some of the libraries that are built in in order for this to uh, work. Uh, so the the Fump library is for like uh, formatting, string formatting. You have some string stuff. Um, you have a whole bunch of other types of um, packages that were built in that are needed is in order for this thing to run. Um, and there's there's a lot in here. So what are we looking for here? We're looking for uh, some of the, we're, we're looking for a password, right? So what if we try and just like filter out some things and uh, rep for a uh, password, right? Do we see like some of that text that's in there? So we see that there's some stuff in there. Uh, there's a, uh, uh, some, uh, output from the uh, some like uh, error message output that could be uh, provided if certain uh, error conditions are met. Uh, that doesn't really give us much. Uh, but the other thing we're looking for is maybe like a flag, right? So maybe it just has a flag in there. So we, don't, we see that there's like the, the string flag, reflect flag, all these other things. Um, but with Go, this is kind of like providing a little bit of insight into how Go libraries are, or Go applications are built. Um, there is, uh, you know, it, it pulls in the libraries when it's built. So we see in here that, you know, we had some of those standard libraries like Fumped and Reflect, but then we had this other one that kind of sticks out, this one that's from GitHub, and it's called CTF Flag. So that really kind of sticks out a little bit as being uh, maybe a little bit of interest. And we see that there's this fetch flag uh, uh, function inside of the library. So maybe, you know, this was uh, a GitHub repository, maybe we should just take a look at that a little bit. You know, if if we can see the actual source code, maybe it'll give us an idea as to how this thing operates and maybe it'll give us the um, uh, the flag itself. So if we go into the GitHub uh, repository here, we can see it is an open rep repository mm -hmm. uh, and we do have the source code file for this. So uh, we can see that here is the package uh, that was used and called into that whole binary uh, to build it. We can see that there's a, a single function in here, which is that fetch flag function that we saw in the output. Uh, we, saw, we see a password uh, here, which is a byte array. We have a flag byte array, and then we can see like how this function works. So it goes through the password. It checks the password character by character, um, and it goes through the flag. Um, and it uh, adds one to the flag. So it's kind of like offset a little bit, right? It's not just, if we just converted this, it looks like there's a little bit of math that needs to happen. And then there's a, sing a single check. If the password uh, equals the password that here, if they, the one that they enter is correct, then it'll spit out the flag. Well, why don't we just try running this, in this instead of, you know, uh, going through the other library there? We can just run our, our, our Go code if we want to. Um, and if we go to, uh, you know, the Go, uh, Go Playground, um, we can take a look at that. So let's go to the Playground here because I don't have Go installed on the system. So we'll go into the Go Playground. And what this is, is it's just an interactive console where you can play around with the Go source code um, and, you know, get an idea of how it works. So we'll paste in our function here, our fetch flag function. And... We don't really know what the password is. We don't know what the flag is. And we have this check here. If password uh, does e equals the, uh, if the entered password equals the password, then we'll split the flag. But we'll just override that. We'll say if it doesn't, if we get it wrong, then it'll give us the flag. Let's just do that. That's a little bit easier. So then all we need to do for that is make a call to the fetch flag. We'll send it a password, just A. And then uh, it's going to return the decoded flag here, right? OK. So we want to print that out. So we'll print out the, the, the what gets returned to us. 
And now we've just you know made a few slight tweaks to the source code here. And if we run our, um, our executable here, we can see that now we've overridden the anticipated you know, way that this challenge should operate by grabbing some of the information contained within the binary, seeing what, what we could gain from that, and then you know, doing a little bit of uh, 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 a few extra steps here by going to the playground here. Uh, since we didn't have Go installed, and you know, there's there's uh, steps that are required to do that, um, we just kind of utilize stuff that's available to us in order to do that. So now we can run that. We got the flag. Um, all is good. We can submit that for our points. So, Mike, I have I have to immediately say, like, anytime there's a description in the in in any of the CTFs, and there's always like some cryptic message at the end that like, or maybe there's another way. It's like, all of a sudden I get like, my hair starts tingling and like, ooh, what's the other way? I don't care how you want me to solve it. It's like, what's the other clever way? So um, I don't know, it's, it's just always entertaining when I see those messages and they always seem to pop up in CTFs. So, and then, uh, and just by the way, for everyone on the stream, I, I have not uh, seen Mike solve this challenge before. So this, I'm watching this for the first time as well. Um, and it's like, as soon as, as soon as he reads it out and I'm like, Ooh, please pick the other way. And then you go and you pick, yeah, it's like, I'm not going to do the boring way of, you know, what my reverse engineering professors might want me to do. I'm going to try to figure out the other way. So yeah, that's, that's still great. If, if you wanted to, uh, do a lot of the, the code decompilation that he was talking about, trying to tear apart the assembly, you know, that's a very, very practical skill set for sure. If you wanted to try tackling the problem that way. Um, but uh, the fact that you were able to kind of do that, let's say, without taking that route, that, that's definitely really entertaining to watch. Um, yeah, it kind of gives uh, anybody that's playing around with this two ways to go about it, right? They can go this way that's kind of like a, a less complicated way, but still a little, you know, ch trying to get into the, the, uh, the, uh, the insides of these programs a little bit just to learn a little bit about it. Or for somebody that might have done a little bit of reverse engineering and wants to kind of go through step by step the traditional way, mm -hmm. um, there's you know tools that are out there. I'm not a very good reverse engineer, but that's just not where my skill set lies. So um, in these situations, I like to make sure that it's a little bit more approachable. Unlike the um, the crypto challenge that we did last time, that kind of only had one way to get through it, right? Um, at least there was like one answer. Um, but there, you know, we, we both had our own ways of, of kind of deriving that, but this one had, you know, kind of two anticipated uh, uh, methods uh, uh, built into it. Yeah, the, the, the techniques that you could do to approach this problem are definitely vastly different. Whereas I see what you're saying last time with the crypto challenge where we really had the same technique. It was just, our, am I doing it by hand or am I running some bash commands to be able to solve it? But it was the same technique fundamentally. Um, now, now I did go through that really quickly. Like I kind of just shortcutted all those steps. I didn't really go through all the assumptions that can be made. So that's kind of why, like, uh, I, I feel like it, this will be good to put into the sandbox for somebody to try out because, you know, how, how do you make those logical next steps? Like how, why does that thing, why did that one uh, string stick out? You know, that's just uh, going to involve a little bit of research and understanding and how like those binaries are built. You know, you don't see that sort of situation in, uh, you know, like compiled uh, binaries built with C or, or something like that, but you'll see it with Go. And in this case, we only had this one external library. There are others that involve, you know, hundreds of different libraries. So in this case, that was kind of an anomaly to, to, to stick out a little bit. Um, and that may not be always, you know, something to, to necessarily look for. It's just, you know, anytime that you see, you see something kind of interesting in there, it's worth kind of poking at it a little bit to see uh, if that's like a viable way to, to move forward. And in this case, it kind of st stuck out because of that function call, right? The fetch flag function. It seemed to be in place with what our goal was with this challenge, which is to get a flag, right? That's well, the only thing that we're trying to do here. So um, those little, you know, kind of nuggets of information are really helpful to, to kind of make sure that you're going down the right path uh, versus just, you know, uh, you're poking at anything, you know, throwing it at the wall, seeing what sticks. You know, that's we're trying we're trying to avoid that a little bit with the challenges that we put out there. Um, but, you know, it's, it's hard to predict, you know, ways in which uh, people may find, uh, uh, you know, unique ways to, to go through these. Yeah, I, I like the mentality, too, that you just mentioned of I know that I'm trying to get a flag. So let's keep that as a data point, like in my head. And then it's like, OK, how am I trying to get a flag for this specific challenge? Well, I got to find the password. So like flag and password, these, these are immediate things that should be jumping out in my head and, and taking any of the information like, okay, I know this is a reversing challenge. 
maybe maybe that's a keyword or something that I should be looking for. And let me see what it looks like when I run it normally. You know, like th these are all really good things that that I like to see. Um, uh, you know, uh, you, you really bring to the front and like this is really emphasizing the thought process. Um, and another uh, just quick little tool that I, I thought of immediately when, when you started doing this was, yeah, OK, at, at the command line, you can definitely interpret a lot of this information. But um, I try to have students as well think of things like hex editors, um, mm -hmm. mainly because they, they have a full GUI. And I know how much people like when they have a GUI. Maybe you're a little bit intimidated by the command line. But uh, that would be another good tool where if I had some type of hex editor installed, um, uh, then I would be able to take my information, drop it in a hex editor. And I'm, and I'm commonly telling people, try to look at what the information looks like in Vim or, or, or Nano. Try to look at what it looks like in a hex editor. Try to look at what it looks like when you run it. Try to open it with a browser. Like just try different programs to be able to, to, be able to see. And maybe one of those will give you an insight that, that you didn't necessarily have before. So, um, but yeah, sure. Um, yeah, no, and that that's a, that's a great method. Uh, you know, there's other ways to to do it. Um, you know, uh, just just decompiling it using uh, one of those uh, uh, de uh, decompilation tools like Ghidra or uh, GDB. If you're you know uh, familiar with the command line stuff, like all that all that is, there are valid ways to go about it. Um, and I really want you know it to be something that feels approachable, no matter what your skill set is. Um, to, to find something that, that makes sense in, in tackling this. And maybe again, like I said, reversing isn't my thing. I'm very bad at these challenges, which is why I didn't create this one. Um, so I liked that this one had, had multiple options. And then, uh, uh, as I mentioned before, the challenge description, the title, everything is, is kind of there for a reason, right? The challenge name, go get it, right? That kind of gives you a hint, like, you know, there's this other way and the challenge, go get it. And we see a thing that's related to like a GitHub, like, like you know, it's you know, pushing you along, but it, it doesn't all make sense right initially. So always go back and reread the description, reread the challenge if you're getting stuck on some of these things. Yeah, and I definitely like how challenges like this, this is very, very common, how many times the challenge does push you to something that's actually publicly available on the internet. And you have to go out and find the data actually on the internet on a live site, and that's where the the you know the flag has been hidden somehow. Um, and I also really liked how you know you, you have this problem commonly of oh I don't have the thing installed. I guess I can't do that. It's like no, like there's there's probably some online tool that you can just do it live on on the website. And so trying to be resourceful like that, just because you know one way to do it, like there's there's a web app that can probably do it as well. You know, so if you get roadblocked immediately, immediately think like, well, let me just go to Google and try finding some web app that can maybe solve this next little piece of the journey for me. Yeah, absolutely. I, I highly encourage any of those things. Like we don't anticipate you, you, you building everything from scratch for some of these. It's more like, can you identify what we're trying to go for and then find a resurf, like a resourceful way to go solve it? If that means that you find a tool that, you know, cracks a, uh, you know, one of these simple ciphers online, cool. Like, you, you know that you can just go out and do that and somebody's already done all that work. It doesn't reduce the fact that you have gained that knowledge or you've had that knowledge and, and you're confirming that knowledge that, hey, I've been able to identify what this is, a way that this might be a solvable and a resource that is available on there. Like, all those things are, are great skills to build up. Yeah, definitely. So, well, Mike, I'll say thanks for highlighting this challenge. And uh, I certainly look forward to challenges like this, whether it was created by you or some of our other contributors, like uh, uh, definitely shout out to anyone who wants to contribute CTF to us. We, we certainly accept contributions. Um, and Mike is certainly the point person for that. Um, but I'm looking forward to seeing more things like this in the sandbox as we go to prepare and uh, I'd also toss that out there, you know, as foreshadowing, like what types of challenges are we tossing in the sandbox? What types of challenges are we tossing on stream? Like the, a lot of these same categories are probably going to pop up at the regional competitions, at the final competition this, this coming year. So, um, yeah, I think next time we'll end up doing either forensics or exploitation. Uh, I'm not sure which one yet, uh, but that uh, if anybody's got any, you know, uh, uh, anything that they would prefer to see, like let us know in the Discord. We're happy to try and accommodate. But otherwise, mm -hmm. I'll find something uh, interesting from one of those categories for next time. 